The architecture of India is rooted in its history, culture and religion. Indian architecture progressed with time and assimilated the many influences that came as a result of India's global discourse with other regions of the world throughout its millennia-old past. The architectural methods practiced in India are a result of examination and implementation of its established building traditions and outside cultural interactions. Though old, this Eastern tradition has also incorporated modern values as India became a modern nation state. The economic reforms of 1991 further bolstered the urban architecture of India as the country became more integrated with the world's economy. Traditional Vastu Shastra remains influential in India's architecture during the contemporary era. <inaudible> Indus Valley Civilization BCE to 1700 BCE. The Indus Valley Civilization BCE to 1700 BCE covered a large area around the Indus River basin and beyond. In its mature phase, from about 2600 to 1900 BCE, it produced several cities marked by great uniformity within and between sites, including Harappa, Lothal, and the UNESCO World Heritage Site Mohenjo-Daro. The civic and town planning and engineering aspects of these are remarkable, but the design of the buildings is of a startling utilitarian character. There are granaries, drains, water courses and tanks, but neither palaces nor temples have been identified, though cities have a central raised and fortified citadel. Mohenjo-Daro has wells which may be the predecessors of the stepwell. As many as 700 wells have been discovered in just one section of the city, leading scholars to believe that cylindrical brick-lined wells were invented by the Indus Valley Civilization. The architectural decoration is extremely minimal, though there are narrow pointed niches inside some buildings most of the art found is in miniature forms like seals and mainly in terracotta but there are a very few larger sculptures of figures in most sites fired mud brick not sun baked as in mesopotamia is used exclusively as the building material but a few such as dolavira are in stone most houses have two stories and very uniform sizes and plans the large cities declined relatively quickly, for unknown reasons, leaving a less sophisticated village culture behind. <laughs> Mahajanapadas 600 BCE, 320 BCE. Topic. Topic. Urban architecture Topic. From the time of the Mahajanapadas 600 BCE, 320 BCE, walled and moated cities with large gates and multi-storied buildings which consistently used arched windows and doors and made an intense use of wooden architecture, are important features of the architecture during this period. The reliefs of Sanchi, dated to the 1st centuries BCE CE, show cities such as Kushinagar or Rajagriya as spended walled cities during the time of the Buddha 6th century BCE, as in the royal cortege leaving Rajagriya or war over the Buddha's relics. These views of ancient Indian cities have been relied on for the understanding of ancient Indian urban architecture. Archaeologically, this period corresponds in part to the northern black polished ware culture. Geopolitically, the Achaemenid Empire started to occupy the northwestern part of the subcontinent from around 518 BCE. Various types of individual housing of the time of the Buddha c. 563-480 or c. 483-400 BCE, resembling huts with chaitya decorated doors, are also described in the reliefs of Sanchi, particularly, the Jetavana at Srivasti, shows the three favorite residences of the Buddha, the Gandakuti, the Kosambakuti and the Kararakuti, with the throne of the Buddha in the front of each. The Jetavana garden was presented to the Buddha by the rich banker Anathapindika, who purchased it for as many gold pieces as would cover the surface of the ground. Hence, the foreground of the relief is shown covered with ancient Indian coins karshapanas, just as it is in the similar relief at Barhat. Although the reliefs of Sanchi are dated to the 1st century BCE, CE, portraying scene taking place during the time of the Buddha, four centuries before, they are considered as an important indication of building traditions in these early times. <laughs> Religious architecture 
Buddhist caves during the time of the Buddha c. 563 or c. 483 400s BCE, Buddhist monks were also in the habit of using natural caves, such as the Saptaparni cave, southwest from Rajgir, Bihar. Many believe it to be the site in which Buddha spent some time before his death, and where the first Buddhist council was held after the Buddha died The Buddha himself had also used the Indrasala cave for meditation, starting a tradition of using caves, natural or man-made, as religious retreats, that would last for over a millennium. Monasteries the first monasteries, such as the Jivakarama Vihara in Rajgir, Bihar, were built from the time of the Buddha, in the 6th or 5th centuries BCE. The initial Jivakarama monastery was formed of two long parallel and oblong halls, large dormitories where the monks could eat and sleep, in conformity with the original regulations of the Samgha, without any private cells. Other halls were then constructed, mostly long, oblong building as well, which remind of the construction of several of the Barabar caves. The Buddha is said to have been treated once in the monastery, after having been injured by Devadatta. Stupas religious buildings in the form of the Buddhist stupa, a dome-shaped monument, started to be used in India as commemorative monuments associated with storing sacred relics of the Buddha. The relics of the Buddha were spread between eight stupas, in Rajagriya, Vishali, Kapilavasta, Alakapa, Ramagrama, Pava, Kushinagar, and Vethapita. The Piprawa stupa also seems to have been one of the first to be built. Guard rails—consisting of posts, crossbars, and a coping— became a feature of safety surrounding a stupa. The Buddha had left instructions about how to pay homage to the stupas, and whoever lays wreaths or puts sweet perfumes and colors there with a devout heart, will reap benefits for a long time. This practice would lead to the decoration of the stupas with stone sculptures of flower garlands in the classical period. Topic. Classical period 320 BCE to 550 CE. Topic. Topic. Monumental stone architecture Topic. The next wave of building, relying on the first examples of true stone architecture, appears with the start of the Classical period 320 BCE to 550 CE and the rise of the Mauryan Empire. The capital city of Pataliputra was an urban marvel described by the Greek ambassador Megasthenes. Remains of monumental stone architecture with a strong Achaemenid and Greek influence can be seen through numerous artifacts recovered from Pataliputra, such as the Pataliputra capital. This cross-fertilization between different art streams converging on the subcontinent produced new forms that, while retaining the essence of the past, succeeded in the integrating selected elements of the new influences. The Indian Emperor Ashoka rule, 273, 232 BCE established the pillars of Ashoka throughout his realm, generally next to Buddhist stupas. According to Buddhist tradition, Ashoka recovered the relics of the Buddha from the earlier stupas except from the Ramagrama stupa, and erected 84.000 stupas to distribute the relics across India. In effect, many stupas are thought to date originally from the time of Ashoka, such as Sanchi or Kesariya, where he also erected pillars with his inscriptions, and possibly Barhat, Amaravati or Dharmarajika in Gandhara. Ashoka also built the initial Mahabodhi temple in Bodh Gaya around the Bodhi tree, including masterpieces such as the diamond throne, Varasana. He is also said to have established a chain of hospitals throughout the Mauryan Empire by 230 BCE. One of the edicts of Ashoka reads, Everywhere King Piyadasa Ashoka erected two kinds of hospitals, hospitals for people and hospitals for animals. Where there were no healing herbs for people and animals, he ordered that they be bought and planted." Indian art and culture has absorbed extraneous impacts by varying degrees and is much richer for this exposure. Fortified cities with stupas, viharas, and temples were constructed during the Maurya Empire c. 321-185 BCE. Architectural creations of the Mauryan period, such as the city of Pataliputra, the pillars of Ashoka, are outstanding in their achievements, and often compare favorably with the rest of the world at that time. Commenting on Mauryan sculpture, John Marshall once wrote about the extraordinary precision and accuracy which characterizes all Mauryan works, and which has never, we venture to say, been surpassed even by the finest workmanship on Athenian buildings. 
Rock cut caves Topic. Around the same time rock-cut architecture began to develop, starting with the already highly sophisticated and state-sponsored Barabar Caves in Bihar, personally dedicated by Ashoka circa 250 BCE. These artificial caves exhibit an amazing level of technical proficiency, the extremely hard granite rock being cut in geometrical fashion and polished to a mirror-like finish, probably owing to the 2nd century BCE fall of the Mauryan Empire and the subsequent persecutions of Buddhism under Pushyamitra Sangha. It is thought that many Buddhists relocated to the Deccan under the protection of the Andhra dynasty, thus shifting the cave-building effort to western India. An enormous effort at creating religious caves, usually Buddhist or Jain, continued there until the 2nd century CE, culminating with the Karla Caves or the Pandavleni Caves. These caves generally followed an apsidal plan with a stupa in the back for the Chaityas, and a rectangular plan with surrounding cells for the Viharas. Numerous donors provided the funds for the building of these caves and left donatory inscriptions, including laity, members of the clergy, government officials, and even foreigners such as Yavanas Greeks, representing about 8% of all inscriptions. The construction of caves would wane after the 2nd century CE, possibly due to the rise of Mahayana Buddhism and the associated intense architectural and artistic production in Gandhara and Amaravati. The building of rock-cut caves would revive briefly in the 5th century CE, with the magnificent achievements of Ajanta and Ellora, before finally subsiding as Hinduism replaced Buddhism in the subcontinent, and standalone temples became more prevalent. Rock-cut architecture also developed with the apparition of stepwells in India, dating from 200 to 400 CE. Subsequently, the construction of wells at Dong 550 to 625 CE and stepped ponds at Binmal 850 to 950 CE took place. Topic: <laughs> Decorated stupas. Topic: Stupas were soon to be richly decorated with sculptural reliefs following the first attempts at Sanchi Stupa number no. 2 125 BCE. Full-fledged sculptural decorations and scenes of the life of the Buddha would soon follow at Barhat 115 BCE, Bodh Gaya 60 BCE, Mathura 125 to 60 BCE, again at Sanchi for the elevation of the Toranas 1st century BCE, CE, and then Amaravati 1st 2nd century CE. The decorative embellishment of stupas also had a considerable development in the northwest in the area of Gandhara, with decorated stupas such as the Butkara stupa, monumentalized, with Hellenistic decorative elements from the 2nd century BCE or the Laurian Tangai stupas 2nd century CE. Stupa architecture was adopted in Southeast and East Asia, where it became prominent as a Buddhist monument used for enshrining sacred relics. The Indian gateway arches, the Torana, reached East Asia with the spread of Buddhism. Some scholars hold that Torii derives from the Torana gates at the Buddhist historic site of Sanchi 3rd century BCE 11th century CE. <laughs> Standalone temples Temples—built on elliptical, circular, quadrilateral, or apsidal plans were initially constructed using brick and timber. Some temples of timber with wattle and daub may have preceded them, but none remain to this day. Circular temples. Some of the earliest freestanding temples may have been of a circular type, as the Bharat Temple in Bharat, Rajasthan, formed of a central stupa surrounded by a circular colonnade and an enclosing wall. It was built during the time of Ashoka, and near it were found two of Ashoka's minor rock edicts. Ashoka also built the Mahabodhi Temple in Bodh Gaya circa 250 BCE, also a circular structure, in order to protect the Bodhi tree under which the Buddha had found enlightenment. Representations of this early temple structure are found on a 100 BCE relief sculpted on the railing of the stupa at Barhat, as well as in Sanchi. From that period the diamond throne remains, an almost intact slab of sandstone decorated with reliefs, which Ashoka had established at the foot of the Bodhi tree. These circular type temples were also found in later rock hewn caves such as Tula Caves or Guntapalli. Apsidal temples Another early freestanding temple in India, this time apsidal in shape, appears to be Temple 40 at Sanchi, which is also dated to the 3rd century BCE. It was an apsidal temple built of timber on top of a high rectangular stone platform, 26.52 x 14 x 3.35 meters, with two flights of stairs to the east and the west. 
The temple was burnt down sometime in the 2nd century BCE. This type of apsidal structure was also adopted for most of the cave temple Grihas, as in the 3rd century BCE Barabar caves and most caves thereafter, with side, and then frontal, entrances. A freestanding apsidal temple remains to this day, although in a modified form, in the Travikrama temple in Tur, Maharashtra. Truncated pyramidal temples It is thought that the temple in the shape of a truncated pyramid was derived from the design of the stepped stupas which had developed in Gandhara. The Mahabodhi temple in Bodh Gaya is one such example, adapting the Gandharan design of a succession of steps with niches containing Buddha images, alternating with Greco-Roman pillars, as seen in the stupas of Jaulian. The structure is crowned by the shape of an hemispherical stupa topped by finials, forming a logical elongation of the stepped Gandharan stupas, although the current structure of the Mahabodhi temple dates to the Gupta period 5th century CE, the plaque of Mahabodhi temple. Discovered in Kumrahar and dated to 150–200 CE based on its dated Karoshthi inscriptions and combined finds of Huvishka coins, suggests that the pyramidal structure already existed in the 2nd century CE. This is confirmed by archaeological excavations in Bodh Gaya. This truncated pyramid design also marked the evolution from the aniconic stupa dedicated to the cult of relics, to the iconic temple with multiple images of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas. This design was very influential in the development of later Hindu temples. Square prostyle temples The Gupta Empire later also built Buddhist standalone temples following the great cave temples of Indian rock-cut architecture, such as Temple 17 at Sanchi, dating to the early Gupta period 5th century CE. It consists of a flat-roofed square sanctum with a portico and four pillars. From an architectural perspective, this is a tetrastyle prostyle temple of classical appearance. The interior and three sides of the exterior are plain and undecorated but the front and the pillars are elegantly carved, not unlike the 2nd century rock-cut cave temples of the Nasik Caves. Nalanda and Vallabhi universities, housing thousands of teachers and students, flourished between the 4th-8th centuries. Topic. End of the Classical Period Topic. This period ends with the destructive invasions of the Alchon Huns in the 6th century CE. During the rule of the Hunnic king Mahirakula, over a thousand Buddhist monasteries throughout Gandhara are said to have been destroyed. The Chinese pilgrim Zanzong, writing in 630 CE, explained that Mahirakula ordered the destruction of Buddhism and the expulsion of monks. He reported that Buddhism had drastically declined, and that most of the monasteries were deserted and left in ruins. The Buddhist art of Gandhara, in particular Greco-Buddhist art, becomes essentially extinct around that period. The invasions marked the beginning of the decline of Buddhism in India. Although only spanning a few decades, the invasions had long-term effects on India, and in a sense brought an end to classical India. Soon after the invasions, the Gupta Empire, already weakened by these invasions and the rise of local rulers, ended as well. Following the invasions, northern India was left in disarray, with numerous smaller Indian powers emerging after the crumbling of the Guptas. <laughs> Early Middle Ages 550 CE, 1200 CE. <laughs> South Indian temple architecture Visible as a distinct tradition during the 7th century CE, Maru Gurjara temple architecture originated somewhere in the 6th century in and around areas of Rajasthan. Maru Gurjara architecture shows the deep understanding of structures and refined skills of Rajasthani craftsmen of the bygone era. Maru Gurjara architecture has two prominent styles Maha Maru and Maru Gurjara. According to M. A. Daki, Maha Maru style developed primarily in Marudesa, Sapadalaksha, Surasena, and parts of Uparamala, whereas Maru Gurjara originated in Metapada, Gurjaradisa Arbuda, Gurjaradisa Anarta, and some areas of Gujarat. Scholars such as George Mitchell, M. A. Daki, Michael W. Meister, and U. S. Morthy believe that Maru Gurjara temple architecture is entirely Western Indian architecture and is quite different from the North Indian temple architecture. There is a connecting link between Maru Gurjara architecture and Hoysala temple architecture. In both of these styles architecture is treated sculpturally. Regional styles include architecture of Karnataka, Kalinga architecture, Dravidian architecture, Western Chalukya architecture, and Badami Chalukya architecture. 
The South Indian temple consists essentially of a square-chambered sanctuary topped by a superstructure, tower, or spire and an attached pillared porch or hall mandapa or mantapam, enclosed by a peristyle of cells within a rectangular court. The external walls of the temple are segmented by pilasters and carry niches housing sculpture. The superstructure or tower above the sanctuary is of the katina type and consists of an arrangement of gradually receding stories in a pyramidal shape. Each story is delineated by a parapet of miniature shrines, square at the corners and rectangular with barrel vault roofs at the center. North Indian temples showed increased elevation of the wall and elaborate spire by the 10th century. Richly decorated temples—including the complex at Kajuraho—were constructed in central India. Indian traders brought Indian architecture to Southeast Asia through various trade routes. Grandeur of construction, beautiful sculptures, delicate carvings, high domes, gopuras and extensive courtyards were the features of temple architecture in India. Examples include the Lingaraj Temple at Bhubaneswar in Odisha, Sun Temple at Konark in Odisha, Brihadishwar Temple at Thanjavur in Tamil Nadu. Topic: <laughs> Late Middle Ages 1100 CE 1526 CE. Topic: Topic: Hoysala Architecture. Topic. Hoysala architecture is the distinctive building style developed under the rule of the Hoysala Empire in the region historically known as Karnata, today's Karnataka, India, between the 11th and the 14th centuries. Large and small temples built during this era remain as examples of the Hoysala architectural style, including the Chenakasava Temple at Bailur, the Hoysalaswara Temple at Halabidu, and the Kesava Temple at Samanadapura. Other examples of fine Hoysala craftsmanship are the temples at Belavadi, Amrathapura, and Nugahali. Study of the Hoysala architectural style has revealed a negligible Indo-Aryan influence while the impact of southern Indian style is more distinct. A feature of Hoysala temple architecture is its attention to detail and skilled craftsmanship. The temples of Bailur and Halabidu are proposed UNESCO World Heritage Sites. About a 100 Hoysala temples survive today. Topic. Vijayanagara architecture Topic. Vijayanagara architecture of the period 1336 to 1565 CE was a notable building style evolved by the Vijayanagar Empire that ruled most of South India from their capital at Vijayanagara on the banks of the Tungabhadra River in present-day Karnataka. The architecture of the temples built during the reign of the Vijayanagara Empire had elements of political authority. This resulted in the creation of a distinctive imperial style of architecture which featured prominently not only in temples but also in administrative structures across the Deccan. The Vijayanagara style is a combination of the Chalukya, Hoysala, Pandya and Chola styles which evolved earlier in the centuries when these empires ruled and is characterized by a return to the simplistic and serene art of the past. Early Indo-Islamic architecture. The earliest examples of Indo-Islamic architecture were constructed during this period by the Delhi Sultanates, most famously the Qutb Minar complex, which was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1993. The complex consists of Qutb Minar, a brick minaret commissioned by Qutb ud Din Abak, as well as other monuments built by successive Delhi Sultans. Alai Minar, a minaret twice the size of Qutb Minar was commissioned by Aladdin Kilji but never completed. <laughs> Early modern period 1500 CE. 1947 CE. Topic. Topic. Rajput architecture Topic. The Mughal architecture and painting influenced indigenous Rajput styles of art and architecture. Rajput architecture represents different types of buildings, which may broadly be classed either as secular or religious. The secular buildings are of various scales. These include temples, forts, stepwells, gardens, and palaces. The forts were specially built for defense and military purposes due to the Islamic invasions. 
Topic: <inaudible> Buddhist architecture. Topic: <inaudible> Buddhist architecture developed in the Indian subcontinent. Three types of structures are associated with the religious architecture of early Buddhism, monasteries viharas, places to venerate relics stupas, and shrines or prayer halls chaitiyas, also called chaitya grihas, which later came to be called temples in some places. The initial function of a stupa was the veneration and safeguarding of the relics of Gautama Buddha. The earliest surviving example of a stupa is in Sanchi Madhya Pradesh. In accordance with changes in religious practice, stupas were gradually incorporated into chaitya grihas prayer halls. These are exemplified by the complexes of the Ajanta Caves and the Ellora Caves Maharashtra. The Mahabodhi Temple at Bodh Gaya in Bihar is another well-known example. The pagoda is an evolution of the Indian stupa. Topic: <laughs> Late Indo-Islamic architecture. The most famous Indo-Islamic style is Mughal architecture. Its most prominent examples are the series of imperial mausolea, which started with the pivotal tomb of Humayun, but is best known for the Taj Mahal. The Red Fort at Agra 1565 and the walled city of Fatehpur Sikri 1569 are among the architectural achievements of this time. As is the Taj Mahal, built as a tomb for Queen Mumtaz Mahal by Shah Jahan 1628 Employing the double dome, the recessed archway, the depiction of any animal or human—an essential part of the Indian tradition—was forbidden in places of worship under Islam. The Taj Mahal does contain tilework of plant ornaments. The architecture during the Mughal period, with its rulers being of Turco-Mongol origin, has shown a notable blend of Indian style combined with the Islamic. Taj Mahal in Agra, India is one of the wonders of the world. The Bahmani and Deccan Sultanates in the southern regions of the Indian subcontinent developed the Indo-Islamic architectural styles of the Deccan. The notable examples are Charminar, Mecca Masjid, Qutb Shahi Tombs, Madrasa Mahmud Gawan and Gol Gumbas. Within the Indian subcontinent, the Bengal region developed a distinct regional style under the independent Bengal Sultanate. It incorporated influences from Persia, Byzantium and North India, which were with blended indigenous Bengali elements, such as curved roofs, corner towers and complex terracotta ornamentation. One feature in the Sultanate was the relative absence of minarets. Many small and medium-sized medieval mosques, with multiple domes and artistic niche mirabs, were constructed throughout the region. The Grand Mosque of Bengal was the 14th century Adina Mosque, the largest mosque in the Indian subcontinent. Built of stone demolished from temples, it featured a monumental ribbed barrel vault over the central nave, the first such giant vault used anywhere in the subcontinent. The mosque was modeled on the imperial Sasanian style of Persia. The Sultanate style flourished between the 14th and 16th centuries. A provincial style influenced by North India evolved in Mughal Bengal during the 17th and 18th centuries. The Mughals also copied the Bengali Duchala roof tradition for mausoleums in North India. Topic. Maratha architecture Topic. The Marathas ruled over much of the Indian subcontinent from the mid-17th to the early 19th centuries. Their religious activity took full shape and soon the skylines of Maharashtrian towns were dominated by rising temple spires. Old forms returned with this renewal of Hindu architecture, infused by the Sultanate and later the Mughal traditions. The architecture of Maratha period was planned with courtyards suited to tropical climates. The Maratha architecture is known for its simplicity, visible logic and austere aesthetic, made rich by beautiful detailing, rhythm, and repetition. The aisles and arcades, punctured by delicate niches, doors, and windows create space in which the articulation of open, semi-open and covered areas is effortless and enchanting. The materials used during those times for construction were thin bricks, Lime mortar Lime plaster Wooden columns Stone bases Basalt stone flooring Brick pavements Maharashtra is famous for its caves and rock-cut architectures. It is said that the varieties found in Maharashtra are wider than the caves and rock-cut architectures found in the rock-cut areas of Egypt, Assyria, Persia, and Greece. 
The Buddhist monks first started these caves in the 2nd century BC, in search of serene and peaceful environment for meditation, and they found these caves on the hillsides. Sikh architecture Sikh architecture is a style of architecture that is characterized by values of progressiveness, exquisite intricacy, austere beauty and logical flowing lines. Due to its progressive style, it is constantly evolving into many newly developing branches with new contemporary styles. Although Sikh architecture was initially developed within Sikhism its style has been used in many non-religious buildings due to its beauty. 300 years ago, Sikh architecture was distinguished for its many curves and straight lines. Sri Keshgar Sahib and the Sri Harmandir Sahib Golden Temple are prime examples. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> European colonial architecture. Topic: as with the Mughals, under European colonial rule, architecture became an emblem of power, designed to endorse the occupying power. Numerous European countries invaded India and created architectural styles reflective of their ancestral and adopted homes. The European colonizers created architecture that symbolized their mission of conquest, dedicated to the state or religion. The British, French, Dutch, and the Portuguese were the main European powers that colonized parts of India. Topic. British colonial era, 1615–1947 The British arrived in 1615 and over the centuries, gradually overthrew the Maratha and Sikh empires and other small independent kingdoms. Britain was present in India for over 300 years and their legacy still remains through some building and infrastructure that exist in their former colonies. The major cities colonized during this period were Madras, Calcutta, Bombay, Delhi, Agra, Bankipur, Karachi, Nagpur, Bhopal and Hyderabad, which saw the rise of Indo-Saracenic revival architecture. St. Andrew's Kirk, Madras is known for its colonial architecture. The building is circular in form and is sited by two rectangular sections one is the entrance porch. The entrance is lined with twelve colonnades and two British lions and motto of East India Company engraved on them. The interior holds 16 columns and the dome is painted blue with decorated with gold stars. Blacktown described in 1855 as the minor streets occupied by the natives are numerous, irregular and of various dimensions. Many of them are extremely narrow and ill-ventilated. A hollow square, the rooms opening into a courtyard in the center. Garden houses were originally used as weekend houses for recreational use by the upper class British. Nonetheless, the garden house became ideal of full time dwelling. Deserting the fort in the 19th century, Calcutta, Madras, and Calcutta were similarly bordered by water and division of Indian in the north and British in the south. An Englishwoman noted in 1750 the banks of the river are as one may say absolutely studded with elegant mansions called here as at Madras, garden houses. Esplanade Row as fronts the fort with lined palaces, Indian villages in these areas consisted of clay and straw houses which later transformed into the metropolis of brick and stone. The Victoria Memorial in Calcutta is the most effective symbolism of British Empire, built as a monument in tribute to Queen Victoria's reign. The plan of the building consists of one large central part covered with a larger dome. Colonnades separate the two chambers. Each corner holds a smaller dome and is floored with marble plinth. The memorial stands on 26 hectares of garden surrounded by reflective pools. Topic Republic of India 1947 CE, present Topic In recent times there has been a movement of population from rural areas to urban centres of industry, leading to price rise in property in various cities of India. Urban housing in India balances space constrictions and is aimed to serve the working class. Growing awareness of ecology has influenced architecture in India during modern times. Climate responsive architecture has long been a feature of India's architecture but has been losing its significance as of late. Indian architecture reflects its various socio cultural sensibilities, which vary from region to region. Certain areas are traditionally held to be belonging to women. Villages in India have features such as courtyards, lajias, terraces, and balconies. Calico, Chintz, and Palampur, of Indian origin, highlight the assimilation of Indian textiles in global interior design. Roshandans, which are skylights cum ventilators, are a common feature in Indian homes, especially in North India. 
Topic gallery topic topic see also topic topic notes topic topic references topic Fokima, Gerard 1996 A Complete Guide to Hoysala Temples Abhinav Publications ISBN 81-7017-345-0 Gast Klaus Peter 2007 Modern Traditions Contemporary Architecture in India Berkhauser ISBN 9783764377540 Harrell, J. C., The Art and Architecture of the Indian Subcontinent, 2nd EDN. 1994, Yale University Press Pelican History of Art, ISBN 0300621766 Jafar, S. M. 1936. The Mughal Empire from Babar to Aurangzeb. Peshawar City, Muhammad Sadiq Khan. O. U. 160252. Kee, John, India, A History, 2000 HarperCollins, ISBN 0002557177 Latch, Donald F. 1993, Asia in the Making of Europe Volume 2, University of Chicago Press, ISBN 0-226-46730-9. Livingston, Morna and Beach, Milo 2002, Steps to Water, The Ancient Stepwells of India. Princeton Architectural Press, ISBN 1-56898-324-7. Mitchell, George, 1977 The Hindu Temple, An Introduction to Its Meaning and Forms, 1977, University of Chicago Press, ISBN 978-0-226-53230-1 Nielsen, Sten European Architecture in India 1750-1850. London, Faber and Faber. ISBN 0-571-08225-4. Roland, Benjamin, The Art and Architecture of India, Buddhist, Hindu, Jain, 1967 3rd EDN, Pelican History of Art, Penguin, ISBN 0140561021 Savage, George 2008, Interior Design, Encyclopedia Britannica. Tajal, Christopher 1990. The History of Architecture in India, From the Dawn of Civilization to the End of the Raj. London, Architecture Design and Technology Press. ISBN 1-85454-350-4. Thapar, Bindia 2004. Introduction to Indian Architecture. Singapore, Perry Plus Editions. ISBN 0-7946-0011-5. Vastu Silpa Kosha, Encyclopedia of Hindu Temple Architecture and Vastu, S. K. Ramachandara Rao, Delhi, Divine Books, Lala Marari Lal Charya Oriental Series. ISBN 978-93-81218-51-8 Set, Chandra, Pramid, 2008, South Asian Arts, Encyclopedia Britannica. Evanson, Norma, 1989. The Indian Metropolis. New Haven and London, Yale University Press. ISBN 0 300 04333 3. Mankeker, Kamla. 2004. Temples of Goa. India, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, GOVT, of Ind. ISBN 978 81 2301161 5. Moffat, Marion, Fazio, Michael W., Wodehouse Lawrence 2003, A World History of Architecture, McGraw-Hill Professional, ISBN 0-07-141751-6. Piercy, W. Douglas and Scarborough, Harold 2008, Hospital, Encyclopedia Britannica. Possel, Gregory L. 1996, Mergar, Oxford Companion to Archaeology edited by Brian Fagan, Oxford University Press. Rada and Ubertini 2004, The Basis of Civilization Water Science, International Association of Hydrological Science, ISBN 1-901502-57-0. Sinopoli, Carla M. 2003, the Political Economy of Craft Production, Crafting Empire in South India, C. 1350-1650, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-82613-6. Sinopoli, Carla M. 2003, Echoes of Empire, Vijayanagara and Historical Memory, Vijayanagara as Historical Memory, Archaeologies of Memory edited by Ruth M. Van Dyke and Susan E. Alcock, Blackwell Publishing, ISBN 0-631-23585-X. 
Singh, Vijay P. and Yadava, R. N. 2003, Water Resources System Operation, Proceedings of the International Conference on Water and Environment, Allied Publishers, ISBN 81-7764-548-X. Teresi, Dick 2002, Lost Discoveries, The Ancient Roots of Modern Science, From the Babylonians to the Maya, Simon & Schuster, ISBN 0-684-83718-8. Topic further reading Topic Havel, E. B. 1913. Indian Architecture, Its Psychology, Structure, and History from the First Mohammedan Invasion to the Present Day. J. Murray, London. Kumaraswamy, Ananda K. Visvakarma, Examples of Indian Architecture, Sculpture, Painting, Handicraft. London. Havel, E. B. 1915. The Ancient and Medieval Architecture of India, A Study of Indo-Aryan Civilization. John Murray, London. Fletcher, Bannister, Cruikshank, Dan, Sir Bannister Fletcher's A History of Architecture, Architectural Press, 20th edition, 1996 first published 1896. ISBN 0-7506-2267-9. CF, Part 4, Chapter 26. Topic external links Topic Kamiya, Taiko, The Architecture of India.